Good morning, everyone. <coughs> who joined us today and who watches us online. We start our work at Ukraine Crisis Media Center in the first topic for today, results of climate talks 2017 for Ukraine and next steps. Our guests are Mikhail Chirenka, head of the Department of Climate Policy and reporting of the Department on Climate a change and preservation of a zone layer. Minister of Ecology and Reaction, Member of the Parliament, Irina Stachuk, Director of NGO Ecodia, and Ilya Reminka, uh, Head of Ukrainian Climate Network. And one more person, please introduce yourself. Saying, we thank Ukraine Crisis Media Center for this opportunity. I'm Aksana Aliva. I am a coordinator of the program Change of Climate, and uh, I'm the representative of uh, uh, the <coughs> Climate and Energy Policy Fund named Achter um, Genrich Bjorle. So if you joined us today, you know that uh, uh, <coughs> the climate conference was completed in Bonn, and uh, this was the Convention on Climate Change, and uh, it, it was had uh, presided by Fiji. These negotiations were completed recently, and people who are present today, they uh, returned from there to Ukraine, and they are ready to speak about what was uh, going on during these negotiations, and also we want to discuss uh, uh, the main results of this climate talks, uh, first of all, for Ukraine, uh, what results we got and what are our next steps. So this year's conference was dedicated to the development of the uh, rule book <coughs> that should be <coughs> the rules that should be adopted in uh, the next negotiation in uh, 20. 18 also facilitation dialogue in order to increase the um, ambitions of countries to reduce greenhouse gases and this dialogue should start next year and until 2020 the countries will prepare renewed proposals um, and also there were a lot of negotiations about how to bring global conclusions about uh, the stage uh, that is the uh, conclusions that will be made in 2023 uh, and uh, today we are going to uh, speak about Mikhail Ivanovich Shishenka. <coughs> we want to ask you first of all um, how do you assess the participation of Ukraine of, uh, in this year's negotiations and what are the main issues were discussed in what groups it uh, took part and also about uh, the next steps and uh, the results of uh, this year's conference. So what can we expect in the nearest future? Please. Thank you. <coughs> Do you hear me? Okay, so first of all, I would like to say and confirm about this conference, several words. <coughs> and uh, the previous con uh, conference was held in Paris, the, uh, and the Paris Agreement was adopted uh, in 2015, and uh, uh, then th uh, there was a Marrakesh conference, and uh, the Paris uh, uh, Convention was introduced into force, and the political aspect more was more important. And this was a technical working conference. And before Marrakesh, a working program was adopted concerning implementation of the uh, clauses of the Paris Agreement. I would like to say that Paris Agreement uh, is the framework convention. The mechanisms are identified there organizational and other issues, but we should fill these mechanisms uh, with uh, actions that are the, uh, we should adopt, uh, and it was said uh, uh, that we should adopt procedures, rules, uh, and so on. I would like to say that there should be about 11 packages adopted, and everyone hopes and uh, 
working program is uh, um, created in such a way that in uh, uh, December next year, this book will be adopted. And b before this, in Marrakesh negotiations, and uh, the, there were discussions, a lot of discussions. And my colleagues calculate about 36 days, full days. The, stu uh, the sides were negotiating. <coughs> so this was a technical conference. And uh, in all the spheres, they formed non-formal nodes. Sometimes these nodes exceed uh, the uh, Article 4 of the Convention. So these are big documents that were prepared by uh, the co-heads of the group, and there are positions and views of all the parties. And uh, sometimes they are contradictory, but uh, they are now on paper. So this is non-official. Uh, but still, this is a document, and uh, the parties agreed that uh, based on these uh, non-official <coughs> notes, they will continue their work next year in May. Um, and uh, so we can assess it in such a way. This maybe is not a big step, but this is a step forward. Concerning <coughs> the participation of Ukrainian delegation, it is difficult to encompass all the issues because uh, uh, we have small delegation, but we participated actively. And this is about the actualization of the Paris Agreement clauses. And we worked within uh, contact groups. and. Uh, this was done in the framework of the agenda of auxiliary bodies uh, concerning uh, the implementation body, technical and scientific body, and specially created group <coughs> concerning the Paris Agreement. Also, we believe that there is a significant process, a progress, and uh, uh, a lot of things have been discussed uh, in this group, and decisions were taken. And uh, also, uh, these views were put on paper concerning how this project, uh, how these draft decisions should look. So this was skeleton. So this was uh, such a project that we already have. So <coughs> we had the issues in our focus concerning the Paris Agreement. This is about 90% of time spent on this. Also, <coughs> except this, except uh, the clauses of the Paris Agreement uh, actualization, there were other issues discussed. And during this conference, we completed the review, uh, the fourth review of the issues. Uh, concerning the provision of uh, help for capacity building and uh, reinforcement of uh, capabilities in the countries with the transitional economy. And these programs were started in the framework of convention and the Kyoto Protocol. And uh, uh, this was about uh, transition economies and developing nations. And I would like to remind that uh, um, 12 countries belong to uh, the category transitional um, countries. Nine of them are now the members of the European Union and the uh, three countries, Ukraine, Russian Federation, and Belarus. These are the countries of uh, transitional, uh, transitional economy. So we may speak about Ukraine and Belarus because the uh, Russian Federation didn't take part in these negotiations. They believe that uh, they are a big country. They believe they do not need help. and. Uh, uh, there were thoughts that uh, these, uh, this help should be stopped, but due to the work of our delegation, 
uh, the positive decision for Ukraine was taken. So this uh, support of Ukraine will uh, continue and will be broadened, and the support will be provided to the countries that uh, now get this. So if you are speaking about, uh, uh, you, uh, so this is about Ukraine and Belarus. And uh, also there were the representatives of Belarus, and uh, uh, together we were able to adopt this decision. Our delegation also actively participated in negotiations concerning agriculture. I would like to say that for the fifth year we uh, have these negotiations and uh, <coughs> I believe and we believe that uh, uh, a proper decision was taken after long negotiations concerning agriculture. <coughs> agriculture is the area that is really vulnerable to climate change. And this program <coughs> is really important for us. There were issues uh, and discussions we didn't take part in. This is about gender issues and uh, the decisions about indigenous people and climate change. Also, there were issues that are really of concern to us, and they are connected with the fact that, that for a second uh, year on a, in a row, Russian Federation provides cadastres and uh, greenhouse gases emissions, and, and they include in these reports the territory of occupied Crimea. Unfortunately, these materials are published, and uh, we respond, we react on this. Some progress was done, Secretariat started to respond, but uh, this is not enough. This work should be continued and at the highest level during the plenary session of the auxiliary body. We make, uh, a, made a statement and the US and Australia delegation supported us and you know that uh, Ukraine is in the umbrella group and uh, we closely cooperate with these delegations and also with the delegation of Japan, Article 6, this is our priority as well. And uh, progress was reached in this area. Uh, it was an unexpected success, and this uh, session was the session of iteration. If you follow the negotiations, you may see that uh, documents appeared, uh, the title of which we have never seen before. There are such notions as Pico. How can you translate it? Uh, this is an uh, informal document, informal notes. Uh, so this is whether it is a document. So I do not believe that many people here know about the details of the negotiations, and the, but the progress <coughs> is really important for us, especially concerning Article 6. We will go to it later. So now I would like to ask a question. What will be the next steps uh, of the ministry that will be made in the next half or year or a year before uh, Katowice uh, talks. <coughs> so, um, so all the opinions were put on paper, about 350 pages concerning 11 articles uh, of the Paris Agreement. So we have a skeleton of the project. We should look through these documents carefully. We have uh, the, um, our positions and uh, positions that contradict our position. So um, the position was coordinated with our counterparts, and uh, we should find out w with what uh, um, views we will go to the next uh, convention. Uh, we also have uh, negotiations with the UN and uh, uh, 
they support our views 100% because the issue of differentiation was one of the main issues during this conference and our position and the position of the European Union, Union fully coincide. Also, we should get prepared to the next session concerning our further cooperation with the Secretariat concerning the issue of providing uh, reports. <coughs> So this was uh, Mikhail Chizhenko, head of uh, the uh, head of the Department of Climate Policy at the Ministry of um, <coughs> uh, of Ecology. Uh, we have here Irina Stavchuk. Uh, we know that one of the results of bone uh, negotiations uh, was. Uh, the information that uh, some countries want to phase out of coal. So uh, uh, last year, um, some countries declared that they will phase out coal, uh, uh, that they will use more um, um, use uh, um, alternative energy sources. And this year, uh, 20 countries declared that uh, they will phase out coal, they won't use it in their countries, and also they won't invest in coal uh, projects in their countries and in other countries of the world. This coalition was started by Great Britain and Canada. Also, 25 countries uh, uh, review their participation in anti-coal coalition, and uh, next year we believe that uh, this number of countries will double those who want to phase out coal until 2013. Another issue that is really active uh, was really actively discussed but it was discussed in the previous years as well so <coughs> also reduction of greenhouse gases emissions until 2020 uh, before Paris agreement is into effect and after 2020 when it is into effect. So these goals that were submitted by the countries until 2020, it will bring the countries to uh, <coughs> the increase of temperature to three degrees. But uh, um, countries will do everything possible in order to get to 1.5 degrees. Um, so mm, this is really important because this brings huge consequences. If temperature rises one and a half degree, um, so um, the um, uh, rivers uh, they reduce uh, less, and if uh, uh, the temperature goes uh, three degrees, uh, so uh, ninety percent of the rivers will dry. So. Um, uh, there will be uh, climate refugees if uh, uh, three, the, these are million of uh, people, and uh, if more, these will be tens of millions. And if uh, three degrees, so several billion of people won't be able to live in their territories because these lands will be flooded or dried by uh, lack of water and people won't be able to live in these territories. So if uh, this limit of two degrees will be crossed, our planet will be completely different. So at this threshold between uh, two and three um, degrees, uh, rainforests won't be able to exist. There will be fires and this land will be fully exhausted and it will uh, be uh, people won't be able to live there. It will bring hunger, military conflicts, and, uh, and big numbers of refugees. Speaking about Ukraine, we will also face these consequences. There will be a flood of uh, uh, migrants from other countries, and these are the challenges that we face and the world faces. So we see that uh, the governments discuss these issues, but there are no uh, uh, concrete steps. So what uh, we expect from Ukraine, first, this is warming of houses, uh, development of public transport, renewable energy, and uh, decrease of uh, use of coal and other fossil fuels and uh, the implementation of these actions 
uh, is needed to, in Ukraine, people will pay less for electricity and uh, heating and will breathe fresh air. And uh, the actions that NGOs expect from the uh, Supreme Council and the government. So uh, these are five main that I would like to voice. First, implementation of the adopted reforms in the energy and energy efficiency sector. Ukraine recently has adopted a lot of important laws that will promote energy efficiency in buildings. This is commercial metering and the energy efficiency law, a law on energy saving, a law on electricity energy market. And uh, now uh, there is an issue of uh, developing bylaws and implementation within limits that were established. Task number two, allocation uh, of money uh, for this uh, program, so warm credits in order that Ukrainians were able to warm their houses and reduce uh, the consumption of energy and uh, uh, the, uh, to decrease uh, greenhouse gases. So the energy efficiency nearly uh, remained the same, that, and we addressed the government that we should increase uh, the amount of money for energy efficiency programs. Also, next task uh, is the contribution of uh, Ukraine to the Paris Agreement that was based on previous energy strategy, and now we have different energy strategy, and uh, the, uh, our goal should be brought to uh, more constructive figures, because uh, according to um, uh, the international institutions, we are among the countries that have low ambitions. The task number four is introduce uh, monitoring verification of greenhouse gases uh, in enterprises, and now in Ukraine, they calculate emissions uh, according to different methodologies. There is no unified system for calculations. And also task number five, to develop additional measures to develop uh, renewable energy because uh, the national plan and the measures that are implemented, they do not bring Ukraine to 11% of renewable energy energy until 2020, and we need additional actions, and for this, we should start this process. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. And uh, this is really important to see these clear steps that can be made in this process, especially concerning the issue of verification and transparency of uh, reporting and uh, this issue was discussed during um, these uh, negotiations, and this is important in the context of Article 6 that envisages the introduction of financial and non-financial mechanisms of implementation of the agreement. And here, the issue of transparency and calculation is, uh, is really of importance. And here we have uh, Ilya Eremenka. Uh, he is the head of Ukrainian climatic network that uh, unites 30 uh, uh, environmental organizations, and I know that uh, he followed uh, the agenda concerning Article 6 and its implementation. Thank you, Aksana. <coughs> During negotiations, they had discussions about the use of uh, flexible mechanisms. These discussions were tense because uh, the the first document was the Kyoto Protocol and its mechanisms and the results are ambiguous and they do not always lead to reduction of emissions. That's why these negotiations are ongoing in order to provide mechanisms that uh, um, will allow to reduce emissions. What uh, are they, these flexible mechanisms? Uh, these are <coughs> uh, the, uh, it is stated in the Paris Agreement, and uh, the negotiations are slow in order to see that uh, this reduction is really implemented. <coughs> 
So what it means for Ukraine, if there is a developed country that submitted its goals, that they, uh, they allocate some funds to finance uh, uh, projects in climate change, they can invest this money into another country where the system allows uh, to prove that this will reduce these uh, um, emissions. And as Irina said, and what Mikhail said, we should work on transparency uh, to show that in when these mechanisms are in place, this will reduce uh, the uh, emissions and we will attract uh, money for the projects. Thank you, Ilya. Also, I would like to give the floor to Alexei Ryabchin, um, MP and uh, uh, Green Energy of Changes uh, um, project. Uh, so how do you assess these negotiations in Ukraine? What can be the further action? What can be our further position? What can we expect in the future? And what steps the Supreme Council, the Ministry of Ecology and NGOs uh, um, uh, what can they do in order to improve and uh, what are our further actions? Ariabchin, Alexei, but Kivshina faction also. I work in uh, the committee uh, of the uh, Supreme Council concerning energy, and this was the uh, third conference uh, on climate change I attended, and uh, I uh, uh, deal with these issues uh, as public activist and as a scientist and now as a legislator. The issue of climate change, I believe, needs explanation in Ukraine what it is, why we pay um, so much attention to it. Uh, and in Germany, after elections, they elected six political parties to Bundestag, and three of them were trying to create a coalition. And uh, due to two reasons, where they were not able to find common grounds on immigration and climate change, what should be done in this area by the country. So climate change is a very important issue for political forces. Um, unfortunately, not in Ukraine, but um, I see that uh, um, we can make everything possible in order that uh, the issues of green development, energy efficiency, green transport, ecology, and climate change, that these issues uh, uh, were uh, at the national level in the programs of the candidates to mayors, to um, territorial communities. These are issues are important uh, in political sphere, and uh, we want to know how people, politicians, uh, will respond to these issues. And we want uh, journalists to ask questions, and we should carry out this dialogue not only at the national, but also at the regional level. Why climate change issues are important? I would like to bring an analogy. Uh, when uh, we have one minus uh, one degree more, for example, uh, our temperature rises, uh, you feel unwell, but you can live with it. But if uh, you have 38, it is worse. And then when you have 39 degrees and more, this is dangerous for you. So this issue of one degree, it can be critical for many sectors in Ukraine, starting agriculture and ending infrastructure, housing and energy sector. That's why politicians and civil service uh, uh, officials and public activists, uh, they try to uh, change situation in Ukraine. I attended the conference to help our delegation during negotiations. I had such an opportunity to do it uh, during first week and on weekends. Second week was more official. And uh, there were um, ministers and uh, uh, Kazarvichkovska co-headed uh, she united green deputies from all political forces and to create a green lobby in the parliament in order to 
to elaborate and introduce different ideas in Parliament. Also, uh, I had a controlling function. I controlled the issues whether our delegation met the requirements, and I have a high assessment of our delegation, and we should increase the number. Uh, in our delegation because physically we are not able to cope. We worked uh, from 8 to uh, 11, uh, from 8 in the morning till 11 in the evening, so we cannot attend all the meetings and promote the interests of Ukraine there. Um, and the uh, administration of president uh, reduced uh, the number of delegations and we see that for uh, the administration of the president, climate change is not priority. And here, our activists should work with our power in order that uh, this became a pro become a priority and uh, our delegation should have more members. And uh, uh, from Belarus, we had several people, and we have uh, 10 and more people, some people uh, came, some people went, but this is not enough to defend our national interests. Uh, what was done by Ukraine? We were able to continue financing for the countries with traditional uh, economies, and uh, the uh, people ask uh, what is the amount of money, and um, the uh, um, so, uh, Paris Agreement is not about the funds that they promise to you. This is about the money that you can attract by yourself. So, um, we should create capabilities in our projects. We should have ambitious goals in order to attract this green financing to get uh, more of this financing to build our country. Uh, also, I would like to say that Gustav uh, mentioned about Crimea and about uh, double counting. And uh, also, there were more than 25,000 uh, people. So we raised this issue, and we had a really great level of support. And lastly, it is really difficult to speak about these goals, the renewable energy, housing, the development of electric, uh, electric cars. If this development is not a priority, is not the um, main goal for our power, and those investors, foreign investors from Canada, Sweden, investment from ABRD. They invested this year three and a half billion grivnas, but they didn't get a green tariff that they were promised because the power blocked the issue of uh, the rotation of regulator, and investors will wait for three or four months. Uh, they um, have losses in percentage, and they do not trust Ukraine. And uh, all good things our delegation did, uh, it uh, just uh, broken down by some interests of uh, um, officials and uh, um, investors. They come here, they believe that um, the attitude towards investors changed, but they uh, just uh, uh, are disillusioned, and I call on all political forces, please introduce uh, an uh, uh, ecology issue into your agenda. So, um, and uh, how can we make a priority? <coughs> uh, what can be done by the Supreme Council or the Ministry of Ecology? How to make climate change a priority? First, uh, uh, top down and bottom up approach. So, 
some politicians who are in our uh, unit and the Stop Simra group, and uh, we thank him for supporting this issue. There are other colleagues at the Ministry of Ecology, Natalia Boyka, other colleagues uh, in power, in opposition, for whom this issue is really important. But these are separate individuals. We didn't build a system in order uh, to um, do this country. The country does not understand the importance of this issue and what changes awaits us and how we should adapt to them. So the issue, uh, the, the question to uh, NGOs, how do you communicate uh, these issues, not only to people who are interested in ecology and energy, but for citizens, the Ukrainians, for 45 million of people, and uh, um, about our media sources, the TV, uh, uh, how they disseminate this information and uh, the leadership of our pre uh, media um, to educate people. So there should be leadership uh, from top and uh, also uh, there are uh, uh, and uh, now decentralization is ongoing, and people raise uh, these issues during their meetings with the deputies, where the deputies focus the attention of people on these issues. For example, maybe we should um, plant other crops because they will be in the framework of the convention and also uh, now uh, there is no proper infrastructure and we do not teach our children how to sort wastes and we will um, and uh, people uh, they should have their responsibility to make our country green in 5, 10, 15 years, it will be done quickly in order that Ukraine benefited from this. Uh, our parents, uh, us and our children should benefit from this. So uh, these uh, climate change issues should be broadly discussed. So we will start Q&A session. Please raise your hand if you have a question in order that we see if you have questions. No questions at the moment. I have a question to Mikhail Ivanovich. Today you said that the delegation uh, that was present at the conference Maybe we should not have 200 people, as some delegations have, but for 10 people it is really difficult. And we spoke about it during negotiations. We work until 1 a.m. Do you believe that this issue should be discussed to, to speak with the presidential administration uh, to broaden the delegation to include other departments to establish interdepartmental cooperation within the delegation first i would like to say that during these negotiations we had the representative of the presidential administration and uh, i would like to thank him svetlana yerova to, uh, to thank her, Svetlana Yerozova. She came with us and worked day and night. And uh, in three days, she was really profe uh, professional in the issues that were discussed. And uh, we had seven or eight people in the delegation. The issue is financing. I would like to say that those specialists who came there, these are not just representatives of the ministry. And 
Uh, concerning Article 6, you should be a really great specialist, and uh, such people do not work at the ministries. Sometimes they enter working groups at the ministries, and I would like to say that we had three highly professional experts who came there supported by their own money or by the international organizations. A secretariat provides some financing that uh, allows uh, participation um, of officials, uh, but uh, these are only several people. Concerning budget funds, the ministry didn't allocate money for this, didn't spend any money. And this is the issue of budget programs. I would like to say something about other issue before Irina speech and the speeches of other representatives. What Irina envisaged in her plan, there are two points that uh, directly relate to our ministry. First, the monitoring and verification system. First, I would like to say that at the moment, yesterday we had a meeting supported by BMR project, and the World Bank helps us to create such a system. And yesterday we discussed the first iteration of this package, and in May, the package starting from law and ending with four bylaws, we plan to introduce them for review, and we hope for active discussion of these documents, because first it will help uh, us uh, uh, with provision 87, and uh, we need a transparent system on re of reporting and verification. Without it, uh, we cannot speak about trading in the framework of Article 6, and um, development of strategy uh, will be impossible. So uh, if uh, you do not have proper data, you won't be able to identify and assess your goal, assess your achievements. And it is um, and about the contribution energy strategy was adopted, and now the ministry placed on its side first um, draft of uh, um, low carbon development as it is envisaged by the article of the Paris Agreement. And in Bonn Conference, we presented our work, our um, survey concerning procedures until the mid of century to go to 100% re 91% renewable energy, maybe not 100, because two, uh, 100 would be too ambitious. And uh, in the majority of cases, uh, the um, data of your do document and our document coincide. And uh, after the adoption, the next step, we do not doubt that our national uh, contribution uh, will be reviewed, and we will have more ambitious goal, maybe even two goals. The question is when. So we have deadline 2020, and I believe next year we will start this work, but let's go stage by stage. First the concept, then we review the Cabinet of Ministers, the plan of actions to implement this concept and the concept that was adopted in December last year. This was the um, comprehensive document in climate change and uh, also uh, the uh, review of the uh, national determined contributions. And also I would include the, uh, the issue of uh, the adaptation. Alexei mentioned about new crops, agriculture, Unfortunately, climate change is an, uh, inevitable, and we cannot stop it. We uh, can only delay the process. Even 1.5 degrees envisaged by the Paris Agreement will lead uh, uh, will result that uh, the south of Ukraine will be half desert. Maybe we will uh, raise bananas and uh, 
pineapples there, and uh, we should understand that agriculture will suffer. Some people say that uh, it will benefit. Maybe in mid-term prospect uh, it will be plus, but uh, we forget, don't forget that uh, there are many pests we've never heard before, and many infections we didn't know. We face the problem of uh, uh, accounting for forests and uh, um, specialists say that in 50 years we won't have pines in Ukraine. Maybe in Carpathian, so there will be some, uh, but uh, in Kiev Oblast you won't have it. So adaptation is important and mitigation and reduction of emissions are important issues. So I would put it not on a sixth place, but um, on the first, and uh, we should pay more attention to it. We plan measures in this area, but here we need funds and specialists, and we lack specialists in this. Thank you. So the issue of adaptation and reduction of emissions, they go hand in hand, and we should uh, speak about reduction of emissions. And uh, at the conference, we spoke about renewable energy that should be used 100%. And there are many uh, figures that differ in this strategy. And the analysis was published at the, on the page of the fund. I have a question and proposal to Mikhaila. The matter is that. Uh, we take part in negotiations as civil society, and long time ago, I um, uh, I saw that uh, that civil society was included into delegation, but uh, um, in recent years we wrote letters, but we were not included in the delegation. And we have the proposal. We are ready to work with the delegation. We are ready to help. We are ready to discuss the positions, the issues, and so on. You know, during this conference, 1,500 NGOs were registered, those who took part at the, uh, in this conference. And my personal view, maybe there is some conflict of interests. There were some cases when they included them. I saw the uh, response of other delegations. So. Maybe you should decide whether you are official uh, uh, organization or NGO. So this is my view on this. To respond to this, I fully agree. So if we divide officials and uh, um, public uh, and uh, civil um, society activists, we should um, speak, we should uh, spread information, uh, and uh, we should meet before the conference in order to coordinate the issues concerning directives also during the conference and after the conference. And uh, I believe that uh, activists, uh, they are not in conflict because previously we had some conflicts. Now the power and uh, civil society, they work hand in hand. And I believe I have a feeling that uh, we have common views, but uh, civil activists, they have more ambitions. I also have more ambitions and uh, wishes, but they are higher than institutional capabilities. In other countries, the uh, climate change envoys that deal with the climate diplomacy. And as Mihaila said, we do not have enough, enough specialists. We. Um, we invite uh, experts from uh, business organizations, from NGOs, those who um, are specialists in the field. So uh, you should be a great specialist uh, 
to understand previous context uh, because when you come for the first time you will just listen you won't be able to propose something because many things were discussed even five years ago so sh we should reinforce our delegation not only with experts but also with politicians who understand these issues because uh, there are many bilateral meetings, and I was able to speak with five American senators from Democratic Party who came there to say that they do not support the policy of Trump, and they have a slogan, they got united in the United States for counteraction of climate change. They say uh, we are still in, so they are in the press dialogue, and uh, they uh, uh, reported each of them, and I asked uh, uh, them about many issues, and I said that the Supreme Council of Ukraine was one among the first who ratified, uh, started the ratification of uh, the Paris Agreement, and they said that in the uh, Senate they always help Ukraine to fight fossil fuel aggressor, the country that uh, de facto is a world gas uh, station uh, that uh, carry out aggression now, and uh, one of the senators uh, who understand the situation, he said that uh, uh, Ukraine is uh, the second after Uzbekistan in energy efficiency, and if you bring this level up to Poland and uh, Germany level, so uh, you will get energy independence. So the whole world is ready to help us, and uh, two senators, these are Marquis, Massachusetts, and Senator Cardin, who represents Maryland. They were really active and uh, interested in Ukrainian issues. And uh, Pat Cox is really known. He traveled to Ukraine uh, often, and he was the president of the European Parliament. So many politicians deal with these issues, and we hope that in Ukraine this is needed and we will help our delegation. Unfortunately, time is up. There will be the next briefing. We thank Ukraine Crisis Media Center for giving us this opportunity. So we spoke about the Climate Change Conference in Bonn. We see that there is a lot of work still ahead of us, and we should do more and all the stakers, uh, stakeholders should uh, properly contribute, and uh, we hope that we will follow uh, the events in uh, uh, May, um, and we hope that during uh, that sessions uh, they uh, will take some decisions before Katowice meeting, and we hope that if uh, we do not speak about uh, the introduction of uh, civil society activists to the delegation. We still should have coordination before, during, and after the conference. And we hope that uh, civil society activists will also be able to discuss uh, these issues before uh, next year um, uh, negotiations. And the main is that there is enthusiasm uh, there is a wish from different stakeholders to work for the benefit of our planet and Ukraine because the interests of the world and the interests of Ukraine coincide in this issue. We should adapt to climate change and we should not lose time. We thank those who joined us today here and those who watched us online. Thank you. Till the next time, goodbye.